Major Russell calling in on line O. Oh, I just told him that. All right, sir. Hello? Yes? Can you hold, please, for just a moment? Operator? Yes, I'm holding. Thank Hello? you. Hello? Just a moment, please, Mr. Senator. Right, I'll be right with you. Mr. Senator? Yes? Thank you, sir. Just a moment. Hello? 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 Senator Russell. Hello? Yes, sir. Well, you always leave in town. You must not like it up here. Well, you left. I figured that since you got out of town, that the uh, country could get along a whole lot better without me than it could you. I don't know. Uh, so I got out. No, that dang Warren Commission business has whooped me down, so we got through today, and I just, you know what I did? I went over and got on the plane and came home. I didn't even have a toothbrush. I didn't bring a shirt. I got a few little things here. I didn't even have my pills, to, my antihistamine pills to take care of me in Fasima. Why did you get in such a rush? Well, I've just worn out fighting over that damn report. Well, you ought to take another hour and go and get your clothes. No, no. Well, they were trying to prove that the same bullet that hit Kenny the first was the one that hit Connolly. And went through him and through his hand, his bone, and into his leg, and everything else. Just a lot of stuff there. I had couldn't didn't couldn't get all the evidence and cross examine all of them. But I did read the record and. So I just, uh, I don't know, I was the only fellow there that in the practice that suggested any change, whatever, and what the staff had got up. I, the staff business always scares me. I like to put my own views down. But well, we've got you a pretty good report. Well, what what difference does it make which bullet got Connolly? Well, it don't make much difference, but they said that, uh, that they believe, that the committee be the commission believe that the same bullet that hit Kennedy hit Connolly. Well, I don't believe it. I don't either. And so I couldn't sign it. And I, I said that Governor Connolly testified directly to the contrary, and I'm not going to approve of that. So I finally made them say there was a difference in the commission in that. Part of them believed that uh, that wasn't so. And, uh, of course, if a fellow was accurate enough to hit Kennedy right in the neck on one shot and knock his head off, Next one, when he was leaning up against his wife's head, not even wound up. Well, he didn't miss completely with that third shot. According to that theory, he not only missed the whole automobile, but he missed the street. Well, the man's good enough shot to put two bullets right in the candy. He didn't miss that old automobile and all the street. But anyhow, that's just a little thing. But we what is it? What's the matter of the whole thing? What does it say? Oswald did it, and he did it for any reason? Well, just that he was a general uh, misanthropic fellow that he uh, had never been satisfied anyway he was on earth in Russia or here, and that he had a desire to get his name in history and all. I don't think you'll be displeased with reports too long, but it's a uh, whole volume. Unanimous? Yes, sir. Hmm. I tried my best to get in a dissent, but they'd come around and trade me out of it by giving me a little old thread of it. To, uh, we uh, got a couple of destroyers out there. I didn't it on television. It had some more trouble there. And uh, we don't know what the hell happened, and they don't know. It's night, and uh, what happened is their radar picked up what they thought was surface craft. They, f they fired a warning shot, and I imagine these guys are pretty nervous, and they don't want us to get a ship sunk, and they... They know it's dangerous as hell out there. And so they fired a warning shot, and the radar indicated they have nothing now except electronic stuff. But the radar indicates that there were some ships 
coming in on them, uh, some kind of surface craft. They don't know what. They don't know whether it's Vietnamese. Torpedo no, 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 no. I wouldn't get excited. And they all got worried here today, and they always start out, Dick, I never saw these people talk so big and wind up with so little. This last attack, they told me positively they'd had nine torpedoes launched. And then, by God, at one point, you couldn't tell whether any of them had been launched. Oh, no, so they didn't know, and I, I'm not convinced to them yet that, that they were. Well, McNamara says today they got the proof now. They got it from communications and intercepts and everything else. There's no question of what they fired from six to nine, but we had a big round about that at day and lunch. But I said, I'm just tired of these damn fellows getting scared to death, and they just remind me of a woman that's having to change life, thinks everybody walks in the room trying to rape her. And I want to get some better evidence than you're getting before I move. And if you think I'm going to start bombing the hell out of these uh, MiGs on the airport, so I, uh, you're going to have to get me something to show that somebody shot at me. And they haven't been able to do it. So I've held it up all afternoon, and now they come in tonight and say, well, they agree that my hunches or instincts are probably better than their information. Uh, but they do have the poor destroyer commander. He says he's convinced in his own mind that this electronic thing is uh, accurate and there was some kind of a ship he's shooting at. And he believes that he might have hit one of them. Uh, but he can't find any debris or anything to prove it. And the question of what he's shooting at is whether they shot at us or not. Well, he, they, we have no information at all that they ever shot at us. And we're not so damn sure that there's even many ships. He might have been shooting at a whale, for all I know. I've read all the reports now. I just finished it, and I started calling you when they were trying to shove me a little bit, and I held it up. Now they all agreed we ought to close up for the night, and it's weather's closed in, and they can't get any more stuff. And everybody, the admirals and all the joint chiefs, and even LeMay, I don't think, is ready to go bombing tonight and uh, let Peiping live another night. Uh, well, I wouldn't think about bombing anybody anywhere unless I knew I'd been attacked. I don't mean by that you got to wait till you got a ship hit or knocked out, but uh, they say that they saw these ships moving the uh, radar indicate surface crafts are moving toward them. They fired to warn them and they just kept coming. So then they fired and they think that they sunk one of them, uh, but they don't know. They just disappeared on the radar. Is any fire explosion? No, no, no. You no. can't hit one no little old torpedo. That's right. It looks like it. Yeah, it looks up. like it, looks like it, looks like it. That's what I pointed out to them, but they didn't see any of that. Didn't see any of it, so we're just going to close down now and let it go for a while. Well, I just, I, I don't know about that. I, I just, I just think those fellas uh, got to understand, Mr. President, the fellas 8,000 miles from home up there in a strange bay. It don't take much to get him. Uh, on I know that. I know that. I, I just. I mean, I don't care how cool his nerves are. I'm not imputing any uh, lack of stability to the people who are there. They are all fine young men, but uh, they, 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 uh, there's never been any any brave man that you know, out in the war that hadn't shot a lot of times at a bush or a, a piece of paper blowing along or something that he thought was the enemy about to attack him. Well, now another thing, uh, you ever hear of Eccles County, Georgia? Yes, sir, I know where Eccles County is. Well, you got a sheriff. Eccles County in Georgia, you got yeah. about 450 feet. Well, they, they, uh, they, they got up a list of counties that when you're a disaster area, I don't certify any of them, your state does that. And uh, they say that Eccles County ought to be eligible for any of this disaster thing. Sheriff gives out an interview, said they didn't have anything but one bent to TV antenna. <laughs> so that's a hell of a reflection on the honesty of the sovereign state of Georgia. Well, I don't know a thing about that, Mr. President. I don't even know who the sheriff of that county is now. It's a very small county. It's right below Valdosta. It belongs to the, uh, the paper companies. And they planted all them pine trees, all they like the the paper companies have, and there's nobody left down there. Well, I guess we just ignore it. I thought I'd tell them to call the governor and tell him, by God, I don't want to be well, in the heaven I think I'd tell them if the law required the, uh, that there be a local certificate before they were declared a distress area. I just distress, I just declare that. That's all they, it's the law. That's all it did. Now, this Mills fellow, this banker that you know, uh, I asked you about the other day. Mills Lane. Mills Lane. I found out today they they had a, on a list yesterday for me to name the communication satellite board. 
which is the most important thing that I've got to name, and you've got to be shrewd and smart and able and tough and honest, and uh, be just like you are on the Warren Commission. And so they had this fellow's name on there, so I started seeing where it came from. I asked if you had called up and urged anything, said no, but said Talmadge had. That Talmadge had called Walter Jenkins a couple of times, but Walter hadn't, uh, hadn't put it on the list. But Ralph Dungan, Kennedy's man, came in and said that this is a top fella and he ought to really be on it. And you know how Morris and all of them are going to raise hell, and I don't know a thing about it. He was up at one of my meetings, and as I remembered it, you told me that he was a, a great uh, friend of Talmadge's and uh, the governor's. Now, mm -hmm. now, we haven't heard from the governor. I've got to talk to the governor, I guess, if he had it, but I didn't want to do it. The governor will be for him. There's no question about that. He's well, is he, is he a Russell man? No, sir, he never has been, but he's a good man. I want to tell you that. Uh, well, I don't want to be important to anybody that's not going to be for you or that's caused you any problem. Well, he's uh, he's more of a Talmadge man. and uh, so Oh, he's red hot for Talmadge. Uh, they say Talmadge has never shown any interest in anybody around here except the, this, the, this one he's well, called he on through. Puts, he puts up a whole lot of money for the fellows that will do what he wants them to do. And you know how damn independent I've been cursed with it all my life. And uh, I just... Uh, Unless you make some commitment to him before you elected, they, he don't come in, and I just never have done that in my life. And uh, uh, but he's he's you know telling how much money he's put up in Herman Talmadge's campaign, or in uh, Sanders's he financed Sanders' campaign. As a matter of fact, he's got a, a note now in his bank. I've heard on pretty good authority for one hundred ninety thousand dollars was left over in the last campaign. But Mills Lane is a capable man. And uh, he's not quite as stable as I'd like to have him. He's a little flighty because he inherited all his wealth uh, from his uh, father, who was one of the truly uh, great builders of this state. Uh, but he's a, he's a man that demands a lot of adulation, and I just never have been uh, much of the uh, Salem kind. But uh, he's a good man, and, and I certainly have many objections. You appoint him on that commission if... if, uh, if uh, if uh, Herman and uh, Carl won't him on that. I haven't talked to Carl. I don't know what he wants, but Herman and the Herman hadn't well, talked to me. Herman, uh, Herman has he called. Wants to call more than he does Herman. Well, you told me the other day when you said something about him coming up to one of my meetings that uh, uh, I believe he's on a small business list or the banker's list or something. Yes. And you told me that he was. You told me that he was friendly. But uh, uh, Herman hadn't called me. He's talked to Walter, and they didn't want to bother me, I guess, to talk to Ralph Dungan on the staff. Now, the next fellow's on it's named Rubel, who's Assistant Secretary of Defense uh, under McNamara, and I never heard of him. Walter That's Jenkins, name? Rubel. Are you BLE? Yeah. And oh, God, I had to confirm him. Oh, no, he must be one of those deputy secretaries of defense. They said he was very able from California, and uh, I thought maybe you ought to... That well, you ought to know him, man. Well, I can't keep up with all those deputies. Uh, McNamara's got a small army of them over there. And I can't keep up with them. I, I think I know that most of those have been confirmed, but there's only 23 of those. And there must be, uh, uh, oh, 35 or 40 of these assistants, too. Uh, well, he's going back to California now. I mean, I want to point him. Well, he, I don't know a thing about him. Mills Lane is an honorable man, a highly honorable man. He likes to be recognized. He demands he be uh, petted and shown some attention. But he is uh, almost fantastically loyal to people that he thinks uh, show him the uh, the attention he deserves. The only time Ernie Vanderbilt asked my political advice was when he was a candidate for governor. Lane got him up there and said, no, I'll, I'll, uh, Put up any money is necessary for you to run and uh, go, but uh, you've got to, we, I want you to do that so and everything. And then he came to me and said, I never have asked you any advice, but would you promise to do this? I said, no, I would not. But I'm not telling you not to, because that fella can hurt you. I said, but he can't support your opposition. So you're in a more uh, <laughs> That day's position I'd be, and I'd just tell him that you were his friend and do what you could for him. He couldn't make any definite promise, and he did, but he came on through and supported on him. Incidentally, the last man that, that ever offered to give me any money and that had any money died the other day, and he was your friend, too.
So he didn't believe in a damn thing you believe in. Who's that? Charlie Daniels. Yes, bless his heart, and he did give me money. Did he? Yeah, 1960, he gave me. Well, I'm rather surprised he had, but, but he's, uh, he died the other day. And, uh, I saw it. I wrote his wife a letter, and he gave me $10,000 in New York. Uh,